All right, so I had a request for this one. What's in my camera bag? In this case, my Pelican case, wedding edition. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? Welcome back. We're at it with yet another video. I know it's been about two weeks since I uploaded, but work gets busy and these videos are really, really tough to, to put together and edit. So bear with me. But I did have a couple questions recently. People hit me up on Instagram, YouTube, asking me what do I bring to a wedding? So I'm gonna go, so we're just gonna go through that and just kind of run through that really, really quickly. Now, just please keep in mind that I've been in the business doing videography and photography for the better part of three, three and a half years now. So all the camera equipment that I'm gonna mention in this video has been acquired over a three and a half year stretch. I don't intend people that are just starting out and that are beginning into the business to have abundance of all these things. But so a couple of you guys asked, so I'm just gonna go over everything I pack into this little Pelican case and let you guys know what I bring to a wedding shoot. Let's get into it. All right, well, let's talk about the Pelican case itself. I got this Pelican case on Amazon. I believe it is the, the 1535 edition. The reason I got this model because it is small enough to carry onto an airplane as like a carry-on luggage. So I don't have to check it and I can just carry this on with me, especially when you're backpacking in a bunch of camera equipment if you're traveling. You don't want to check this thing and put this thing at the bottom of the airplane where it's banging around with all the other luggage and you have really, really expensive camera gear, a la glass and camera bodies that you don't want to get damaged. So I would recommend going with the 1535 if you do do a lot of traveling. Um, it's airport safe and it's going to and it's going to be small enough to carry on to the plane with you with personal luggage and big enough where you can carry a bunch of different things inside of it. So. That's the why I went with it, 1535. Let's crack this open and take a look real quick at how I got this thing set up. So I went ahead and went with the, the track system dividers. I just think it looks really cool, really sleek. I love the little red finishes around it. And it's just really easy to keep everything organized and as opposed to like the foam or the padded dividers. Um, this just looks really, really good. And it's easier just to just have everything laid out. And the dividers are really small and slim, so you can fit more things into it as opposed to the big padded things. Um, you want to take those big padded things, take up a lot of space. I, I do, it does protect your equipment a little bit more than these, I would say. But again, having something like this, you would be able to pack a lot more stuff into it. And I went with the uh, little pouches here at the top instead of the foam. Just the, carry, you know, more essential items like cords and batteries and just things, type of things like that. So that's basically what it looks like inside. All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today that goes into the case, other than the case itself, obviously, is going to be a camera body. Now, I usually take about three camera bodies when I go on shoots. It's the A7S3, which is one of my mains. I take the FX3, which is also like a sub main. So it's like a dual main camera. I also take the a7 IV when I'm shooting video. So why I take three cameras, two cameras is essential, especially when you're shooting ceremonies and whatnot. I usually have two cameras set up to the side, bride one camera, groom one camera, and I'm usually holding another camera where I'm floating around, getting crowd reactions and just getting other detail shots and reveal shots and other creative shots that I can get throughout the ceremony just to have that extra bit of, you know, storytelling to the whole wedding film atmosphere. But that's the only reason why I would carry three cameras. I don't necessarily would use three cameras throughout the entire shoot. I'm only, I'm usually only using one camera and it's typically my FX3. And sometimes I bring my girlfriend on the shoots with me and I have, she's basically a second shooter or if I hire a second shooter, I would want them to kind of get the same exact camera quality that I'm getting. So I would throw them the A7S3 and then we can just kind of walk around and just shoot the wedding day accordingly. So in terms of quiet camera bodies, it's the A7S III, the FX3, and the A7 IV, which is behind me. And that's what I use for my camera bodies. All right, now let's talk about some lenses that I take with me. Um, some of the lenses I'm not gonna be able to show you guys because I'm either using it or it's being rented out. First and foremost, the lens that I'm shooting right now is the 50 millimeter F1.2 lens. That is my baby, that is my go-to. It comes with me on every single shoot. I'm usually using that lens throughout 
probably 80% of the entire shoot. I also have the 35 millimeter f1.4. I don't use this lens typically a lot just because of the breathing issue that it has with this thing. If anybody owned the 35 1.4, you know what I'm talking about. It breathes and it hunts a lot and it's very annoying when, you, when you're trying to fly this thing and you're trying to get focus and things like that and that thing is just flying focus everywhere. So if I do use this lens, it's typically on manual focus and it's, you know, to kind of to create some wide and establishing shots. Typically I would use a 24 mil, but I shot a wedding about a year ago and it was stolen. Be careful out there guys, protect your equipment, make sure you know where your equipment is at all time. I had a lens, I had my 24 millimeter lens stolen from me at that shoot. So I've been using the 35 ever since and like I said, I don't use it a ton, but it is nice in a dire pinch. Um, another lens that I take with me, which I don't have here in the studio today, it's out on rental, is the 24 to 70 G Master lens version one, because you know, I haven't got up to the point where I needed the version two yet. I do want that lens, but I'm trying to save a little bit of money right now. But I do take that lens with me just to kind of have a little versatility when I'm shooting. Um, Especially that lens gives me that 24 millimeter capabilities that I lost in, t in my prime lens. But it just it just gives you a little bit of versatility, especially when I give a camera to my girlfriend to shoot. She would rather have a zoom operating lens on her camera so she can zoom in and out and things. She doesn't really like using the primes. I'm a big prime guy. I love using prime lenses. It's my go-to. But yeah, so I take the 24 to 70. That's another lens. So that's three. And typically I can get away with using those three lenses on a given shoot. I would take the 70 to 200 with me just in case. And usually that's camera is just like on a tripod for the ceremony and that's about it. I don't use it for any other case. It's either that, honestly, it's either the 70 to 200 or the 135 millimeter F 1.8 lens G Master. And typically why, why I would use that one over the 70 to 200 is because it is a lot lighter and it is a lot less bulky to kind of fit into the Pelican case. I wouldn't necessarily be able to fit the 70 to 200 in this thing, but it is what it is. And again, I only would use the 135 millimeter F1.4, F1.8 lens when I'm setting up the tripod and I'm shooting a ceremony and I have that thing pretty far back to kind of get some a tight shot on either the bride or groom and just have it stationary. And that's pretty much all I'm using that lens for. But again, typically I can get 90% of the things that I'm doing with either the 35 mil or the 50 mil. And sometimes I will bring the 14 millimeter with me just to get some establishing shots, um, some, you know, wide angle establishing shots of the ceremony of the venue of the, you know, all, all the different type of things like that. Beautiful thing about using this with the FX3 is I can digitally zoom into the camera sensor. If 14 millimeters just a bit too wide, I can kind of zoom in, punch into the camera sensor and get something equivalent to like a 24, 26 mil. So yeah, I would bring this for establishing shots, establishing shots only and yeah, I, I use that. All right, and to round out all things camera gear, I do also have a drone that I bring with me. This is, uh, crack that open. This is the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Um, love this drone. Uh, it's been my go-to drone for a long time. I got it when it was first announced. Love everything about it. Um, it's been everything for me. Um, big enough to withstand all the windy conditions. It doesn't move a whole lot. It's very stable in the air. And the image quality and out this thing is just absolutely phenomenal. And to pair with that, I also have the smart remote i love all things smart remotes so when they announced this i immediately bought the smart remote to kind of go with the dgi and uh if you if you fly drones and you don't have a smart smart controller i highly recommend getting one just having not having to take that extra step of plugging in your phone and things like that highly highly recommend it's a game changer so i can just pull this thing out fly it throw it away and then it's just it's just good to go so that's the drone, it has its own little Pelican case and uh, everything's accent red, so you know, that's what we do. So if you wanna, this is actually not a Pelican case, it is a PGI Tech case that I, and that I picked up on Amazon. Everything was already cut out, so if you're looking for something like this, I will put the link in the description 
so you can check some of something like this out and uh yeah man look look at it for yourself all right so now aside from all the cameras and capturing all the visuals the other important piece to that is you do need to capture audio so for microphones i use the tascam dr10ls for ceremonies and dinner speeches and things like that if i just want to you know throw this mic on the bride the groom and put this on them capture clean audio so i don't have to worry about it the cool thing i like about the tascam dr10ls is it's its own recorder so all i have to do is just throw this on either the bride and groom like i said hit the record button and just let them do their thing and if i'm able to i will plug in a audio recorder into the dj and in, into the DJ sound booth just to kind of get a backup audio. And oftentimes that is a little bit of cleaner audio too, because if they're using microphones and things like that. But I would also say it's good to have both um, a DJ soundboard recorder and the Tascam dr 10 l just in case something happens where something fails, maybe you run out of battery or memory card space and you didn't forget, forgot to check it prior to putting this on someone and or if you just plug into the DJ sound booth with an audio recorder, sometimes the microphones cut out and you'll lose all that audio along with that. So it's just good to have some backups. So that's why I use the Tascam dr 10 ls But in terms of the dinner speeches, I pretty much exclusively just use the Tascam Porter Capture X8 plugged into a DJ soundboard. Um, I would show that to you, but it's right here and I'm using it right now, it's, it's recording. But if you do want to uh, check out the Tascam Porter Capture X8, I did do a review on that, linked up here somewhere and I'll throw that in the description as well. So if you wanna check that video out, go ahead and check that out. Love that recorder, it's one of my go-tos. But yeah, that's pretty much all is for recorders, um, for audio recorders, is basically the two Tascam DR10Ls and the Tascam Porter Capture X8 and I'm usually good to go with uh, with those three, so. All right, now we'll start getting to some miscellaneous things. Um, the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro ND Filters Signature Edition 2. Um, I love these ND filters. I usually use these when I'm outside shooting ceremonies when it's bright, bright and sunny outside. It gives it that cinematic touch, and um, so you can be able to stop down to a lower aperture and still keeping your ISO fairly low and then just cranking this thing up to like a four, three, four, five on the ND filter so you can get that nice, super creamy bokeh and blurred out background. And again, just makes it really, really cinematic. So I highly recommend picking up some of these. I have two of them to go on two cameras at the same time when we're shooting like, um, the bride and groom out doing their portrait shooting and things like that to get some cinematic footage. That's pretty much all I use them for. I do use them as well for the ceremony. I'll throw these on cameras or whatnot just to, again, capture that really, really cinematic look. And yeah, Peter McKinnon Pro Pro. I just recently picked up these, so I'm excited to use these going forward in a lot more weddings, but stays in the Pelican case at all times, both of them. All right, and another thing I take with me is a gimbal. Um, I don't use gimbal, gimbals very much. Um, I'm only using this pretty much for establishing shots and or getting some shots when I'm flying around on the gimbal during a ceremony when I'm trying to get like some buttery cinematic shots of the bride and groom standing at the altar, some reveal shots, some crowd reactions, things like that. I am running the DJI RS3, not the Pro. This is just the RS3 version, the smaller version. For me, not using gimbals a ton. I feel like this was perfect for me. It doesn't necessarily require a heavier payload, but I'm only flying like, you know, small cameras and small lenses on this thing. So I feel like this particular model was perfect for me. Did put the side handles on the side of it. So just better grip and better stability when I'm flying this thing. Um, if you want to know what these are, they are the small rig handles. I'll throw those in the description as well. So you can see what that's all about and how I picked that up. But Really, really cool system. I love DJI's systems. I love DJI gimbals just because they're super easy to um, to manipulate and handle and operate and things like that. So yeah. Tripods and monopods. Um, I do like using a monopod. My girlfriend does as well. So we use the Manfrotto MBMX Pro 500. Um, yeah, it's a super crazy name. But yeah, it's just basic, a basic Manfrotto monopod. Um, this is really good for 
capturing the bride and groom as they're doing their thing and you don't necessarily want to hold the camera steady because i'm really a big fan of like still shots i'm not a huge fan of a ton of moving shots and moving subjects and things like that so i'm when i just want to sit there and have the camera steady and then have some support and i can just kind of maneuver that thing easy to carry around oops easy to carry around it's super lightweight and um yeah i love monopods so highly recommend picking up one if you you know are into that type of thing too tripods as well obviously i use manfro manfrotto tripods the 055 series it's what simple tripod has i don't need to show you that because they're just tripods there's nothing crazy or nothing fancy about those so if i'm the photographer for the day and i need to shoot portraits and things like that and sometimes i like using flash because i really really like that dynamic look if you've seen some of my content on instagram and things like that i do use an external flash and that flash is the godox ad 400 pro usually paired with a softbox like a aperture um the big one the aperture what is it light dome 2. um but yeah so this is the this is the strobe that i use it's the godox 80 8400 Pro basic flash with a Sony trigger. And this is how I get my dynamic shots. I'm usually only using one light when I'm shooting portraits because I'm usually using the sun as like a backlight to create that some, some, some type of that dynamicness effect to the photos. But yeah, super basic, super easy. I did drop this thing once, so I broke it, but use sandbags guys. Take sandbags with you just, just in case. It gets windy out there and uh, secure your equipment down so you can protect it. But that's basically it. In terms of lighting for video, I don't necessarily like to take a lot of lighting with me in terms of video because I, like I said, I am shooting on really, really good low light cameras in the FX3 and the A7S3. So using lights, it's just, that, it's just another hassle. It's just extra luggage to carry around, extra poles and things like that. So I don't necessarily like to use a ton of lights. But the few times that I have brought video lights with me, it's just, like I said, it's been such a hassle. And at one point, trying to set everything up, I just end up forgetting them, throw them in a corner somewhere, and I never even use them. So, so that's pretty much it. If you guys liked the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comment section below, or you can hit me up on Instagram and all various other platforms. And till the next time, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.